not actually clear that my ideas shifted all that much. I was burning to write this essay because I've been thinking about the mind-body problem for many years. I think there is sometimes a false assumption that's made uh, about writing nonfiction, which is that uh, it's like journalism. Uh, the writer goes out and does all kinds of research and then comes up with a book. That is, in fact, not the way I write nonfiction. Uh, my essays grow out of many years of thinking about a problem, and in the case of the delusions of certainty, which is directly about the mind-body problem, uh, it does not solve the problem. Uh, it is a way of questioning the history of the problem, opening up questions that fascinate me, uh, tracing the history of certain ideas. Uh, I think if there's one aspect of the problem that I came to, which is not very deeply addressed, it's something that I would like to address in the future, it is the problem of time. And the fact that in physics, which is certainly an important part of science, uh, the space-time block, which uh, is generally accepted uh, in physics, does not include a notion of time which is like the human experience of time. In other words, time doesn't pass. Uh, there's before and after, possibly, but everything is simultaneous. It's all there together. Now, that belief in physics, it seems to me, uh, is in conflict with the way biologists generally work. It's not to say that the laws of physics don't apply to biology, but in physics, the ideal is for everything to be reduced to its most simple and elegant formula. In biology, it seems that it gets more and more complex rather than simpler and simpler. So, depending on what part of nature you're looking at, uh, there seem to be different uh, solutions. So this fascinates me. I'm not clear about why this is. I don't have answers. But I do think that there's a conflict and I would like to write about it at a future date.